Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo has said Nigeria needs a national debate to examine the issues around the size and cost of governance, which has also often been described as expensive and unsustainable. He explained that it could be difficult for the government to do something about it, uh, its cost by itself, but that it is something that must be done. Oshibajo said these uh, while fielding questions by a former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria and immediate past Emir of Kano, Mohammed Sanusi, during a webinar organized by the Emmanuel Chapel themed Economic Stability Beyond COVID-19 on Friday. Reacting to this statement is Pastor Wale Adifarasin and Chief Loretta Anyagolo. It is important that criticisms that are constructive are leveled against any ruling party. Because if you don't have any criticism, then you might as well forget having a democracy. However, if you look at other countries, um, uh, like uh, Pastor said, UK has 200% uh, ratio of debt to GDP. Japan has the highest in the world, 235%. United States of America has about 110% of its debt to GDP. And that's not really the issue, which is why it's very dangerous when you make these comparisons that are numbers uh, in, in economic theory, it's important that we look at the lives of people, look at the capacity of the country. I think Nigeria's problem is that Nigeria is not, produce, is not producing as much as it should. Because quite honestly, if, if you look at Nigeria's debt, relative to the size of the country in terms of its manpower, the resources that it has, the uh, infrastructure that it still hasn't built, Nigeria's development of infrastructure is probably about 10% of what it should be, you know, um, in even close to, we're not even coming close to full capacity. So technically, Nigeria's debt to GDP is not really high. Um, indeed, we're not even close to the, break, the, the median point, which is about 63%, which is the, when you pass 63%, you begin to uh, one, uh, worry about it. But it's important that, as far as governance, which is what I think the vice president was alluding to, we must make sure that we are prudent because, first of all, you can't develop without debt. And if you're going to develop with debt, you must make sure that that debt is used properly and that your own income, your citizens see you to be prudent. Okay. You know, perception in a democracy is probably more than the act itself. If people perceive you to be frivolous, to be profligate, then there is a problem. Because what it means is that even the okay. people who lend you money, investors, will look at you as irresponsible. Oh, oh. So these are the things that Nigeria should consider. Unfortunately, we've chosen a very expensive form of government, which is okay. the presidential system. Well, I am not an economist, so, so I, I can't give this uh, an answer from an economist's perspective. Um, I, I'm, I'm talking as a layman now. Um, uh, they don't always pay salaries. They don't pay salaries on time. And that's, that's, that's an important issue, but maybe not for, for discussion today. Um, we, we need to, uh, we're spending so much money on corruption. Um, projects are costing far more than they should because we have a corrupt society. Um, and really, government should be able to take hands off um, uh, so much that they, they're involved in, and just make sure that they regulate and that we have the infrastructure of power. Right, that's Dr. Wal Pastor Wale Adifarasin and Chief Economist uh, Ani Agolu sharing their thoughts on that matter in an earlier program. And joining us live in the studio to still take a look at that is uh, legal practitioner Libros Oshoma. Always good to have you. My pleasure. Thank you. Now, you listened to that clip. Uh, my first question will be, what's your thoughts around all of this conversation? <laughs> You, you know, I, I, said, I said something outside the studio. Uh, many times I listen to Professor Yomi Oshibanjo, the vice president these days. He talks as if he's in opposition. These are actions that brought them to government. These are the campaign promises that um, they, they, you know, they variously campaigned with. When we get to office, we're going to cut, cut of cost of governance. We're going to reduce corruption. We're going to discuss um, issues around, you know, uh, fiscal federalism and the rest. And so he's in government, he's been in government for five years now. For him now to still be telling us that we need to cut cost of governance. And like um, the economist said, um, uh, Loretta, 
Um, it is not you telling us that we need to discuss. It is your action that will tell us, oh, yes, this government had done this. This government had done far worse than the Met in terms of cutting governance. Recently, the aides of the vice president were reduced and everybody was shouting. You understand? A situation where governors have all kinds of aids, some without table, speakers, all kinds of aids, some without tables, no, no, no job description. And as we speak, government still buying expensive cars. As we're talking now, the government had reduced budget for education, budget for health and you know, other infrastructure development, but the budget for renovating National Assembly is still intact. As we was talking, why everybody was crying on cutting costs and um, 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 building um, health institutions because of the realization of COVID-19, the House of Rep received brand new vehicles, 2020 brand new vehicle with, at, at a cost of 20 million naira each. Per, per person. And then we're talking about, and then the vice president comes and says, we need to have this debate. Mm -hmm. Let the vice president and the presidency, let them cut the cost of governance of those around them. Let us see, you know, the convoys of these people reduce. And then we can now say, yes, the government is cutting cost of, cost of governance. Let us take it beyond this. Mm -hmm. Let us also see ministers follow suit. A situation where you see a minister with a retinue of cars, you know, almost um, a, a, a mobile barrack of policemen guarding one man, and then you come tell me, let's cut cost of government. Yeah. For me, I think, you know, these are campaign uh, 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 rhetorics, and we should, we should have moved away from this right. by now. We should face the real issues. Okay. Libras, you mentioned that it's five years down the line, and if I hear you, what you're saying is that actions should accompany the statement. Yeah, exactly. Now, if that's, but wouldn't, is it, what's the word you say? It's, it's not, never too late, I mean, to make, so, to correct uh, a wrong. If, 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 if Liboros Oshoma is raising this issue, I will understand. If Amaka Okoye is raising this issue, I will say you're, you're, you're trying to stimulate a debate. If Professor Wale Shoenka is raising these issues, I say, yes, Prof is not in government. He's stimulating a debate. He's trying to talk to those people in government. And not the vice president, who is still living, you know, in the extravagant and ostentatious government style mm -hmm. that Liberal. we see. Mm -hmm. You now say, let us have a discussion around cutting cost of governance. Cut the costs of governance around you. Let the president do the same thing. Let the ministers do the same thing. You won't even need to talk. Mm -hmm. Because the multiplying effect of you taking this step, that's practical, not coming to tell us to discuss. But again, Libros, uh, uh, not in because his Because discussion in itself is another jamboree. Right, but not in his defense. Let's just be a bit practical. If the vice president does not say a thing, we accuse him of silence. And then he <laughs> says, and then we're looking at it. But again, he, it's not a one-man thing. He can't make all the decision himself. Well, what I'm saying is this is somebody who is in government. It is, this is not campaign Is periods. there a problem being critical this of the is, government that this you belong is to? Not, we, are, we are out of the campaign period. Right. Mind you, you are also not in opposition. You are in government. And, and so, as you are in government, there are certain practical steps that you would take that, like they say, action speaks louder than words. And, and so, your action will speak louder. Your action will tell us that this is what the president and the vice president want. This is the direction they are going to. Not when you sit down on a huge bowl of, of, of pounded yam, and then you say, oh, I think we need to reduce the food we eat in this house. Oh, you know, that's what I'm saying. The food they are eating, the cost of running the presidency alone is very high. The cost of running the office of the vice president is very high. What we need now are not populist rhetorics. What we need as a government are practical steps and action. As we speak, the Attorney General and the um, uh, Acting Chairman of the EFCC at loggerhead over funds, recovered funds. Mm -hmm. And as we speak now, the um, palliatives for COVID-19 is still shrouded in misery and, uh, and secrecy. And there are allegations of you know, corruption and corrupt enrichment. As we speak, we have, last week we talked about the NDDC and the hisses pool of corruption mm -hmm. and the fraud ongoing there. All of these are government agencies that report directly 
to the presidency. And so if those that are reporting directly to the presidency, the cost of governance there is still very huge. Mm -hmm. And the vice president comes and says, we need to discuss cutting costs. What we want to see is take steps to cut costs of governance, of those, you know, pastors around you. Mm -hmm. And then we can truly now say, yes, your action is speaking louder than, than words. Essentially, so, but saying... when you just talk, uh, let's, we need to have a debate around cost of governance, a national debate, and then we are back to, should we have a confab mm -hmm. or not? That is another huge cost of governance that we can sit down and sponsor, sponsor, mm -hmm a bill to the National Assembly and say, you know what, now I would have, my opinion would have been different if we have heard that the Vice President had caused cuts of governance in his office and has urged ministers to do same and have sponsored a bill yeah. to amend the Constitution to ensure that even those people who are in office, ministers can no longer have so and so and so, even to sum this up, when the President came, he told us, during campaign, he told us that he will ensure that none of his ministers travel abroad for medical mm -hmm. tourism. But the president breached that first rule. He told us also that the private, the presidential fleet will be reduced to fund a, a, a national carrier as we speak. The presidential fleet, apart from two that are grounded, they are still there, about from 13 to, to 11. Mm. It's the same thing. We started making excuse for, excuses for them. As we speak, ministers still have all their children schooling abroad. abroad. And so when you look at all of this, even the vice president recently celebrated his son's okay. graduation. The uh, uh, president's wife celebrated the daughter's graduation. And yet you have your schools that are, you know, what I can't describe as schools, your public institution. So and when you now begin to te tell me about cutting cost of governance, and I look and I say, look, remove the log in your eyes before you're going to talk about the speck in mine. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you're saying in this case, charity should begin from his At home. home. Let All action right. speak louder than words. All right, Libras.